Uh, Paul, Paul Casper, our city engineer, will present this item. Five B. So the uh, the items before you tonight are really re regarding phase one of our improvements uh, to, for the quiet zone project in downtown. Um, previously, we had received a number of. I don't know if we can pull that presentation item up. It's five. <coughs> D is in dog. B. Oh, you got B. I thought it was the hang, uh, the quiet zone or the hanger. I heard oh, quiet, quiet zone. zone. Quiet zone. So, okay. Yeah, yeah, I thought it. It, is it five? D is in Delta. D is in dog. Yeah. Delta. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's it. Yeah. Yes, so we, that's it. We tonight before you is is the three items that are highlighted in yellow on here. There's the uh, agreements that are needed to be in place with Union Pacific to allow our contractor to be within their right of way to finish the improvements needed for those medians that you've seen constructed. You'll may notice how they've got kind of a flat edge on the front end. They need to come and have a rounded nose, and that all happens within the right-of-way of Union Pacific Railroad. And so agreements needed to be in place to allow us to do that. And in addition, there are trackside improvements, so things on the tracks or related to the tracks, such as new planking uh, for potential pedestrian crossings and things like that, that Union Pacific has estimates here included in those agreements for us, those would be costs that the city would be paying directly to Union Pacific, their estimates. Um, and so they could be higher or lower, but these are these are estimates at this point. And so far on other ones, they've been coming in slightly lower um, than the estimate they've given us. But these agreements are for those three. Uh, when you look at all of the crossings on here, we now, if this approve, is approved tonight, we have agreements in place for all of these phase one crossings except for two of them. Uh, 15th Street at the at the bottom of this list and 22nd Street. Both of those are the two crossings that Union Pacific has expressed interest in seeing closed as a roadway crossing. And so we do not have those agreements yet. So that's a quick summary and I'm happy to give you more details if you'd like. Answer any questions. Mr. Mayor, may I? Yes. Um, and this might not be, Paul, you might not be the right one to ask this, but is it safe to say that approximately 20 trains a day go through downtown Bryan? I would say that that's a low number. It's probably higher than that. So um, at least 20 at trains least 20. a day. And depending on which track you're on, uh, you'll see lower numbers on on the one that is called the Bryan subdivision, which is one that kind of parallels Main Street, if you will, and then the one that turns and runs down 27th Street. That one sees a higher uh, track volume, so you'll see more trains on that one. Great. Right. And I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mr. Have Mayor. we seen, how, what has been the increase of the trains over the last five five years all i can give you is anecdotal that it has increased i don't have new counts the last counts we were officially given i think they were dated 2018 and that's the that's in the mid 20 range for all for all of them okay i'm sorry it's fine uh, just for a little background since we are a new council when was this quiet zone project started can you give us a little bit of the history and at what point of the project we're at now so we've we started the project as early as 2007. Uh, it wasn't shortly before that that quiet zones were even really a thing or really allowed. And so in 2007, we really started, you know, investigating um, to find out what the program was about uh, and, and to be able to, to have more information uh, to present to council to move forward. Um, I would say we got very, we, we got educated between the period of probably 2007 until uh, probably mid 20, 2012, 2013, we then started putting a more formal process together and had discussions with council. Uh, we reached out and applied um, with the Federal Rail Administration, who's the entity that gives us the, the quiet zone in the end. And that process, uh, application process started in 2014. And we put a, the city council put together a uh, quiet zone advisory committee uh, in December of 2015. And so that's been the group that uh, staff has been reporting progress to uh, sometimes multiple times a year at that committee meets, sometimes once or twice, depending on the progress we've made. Uh, significant design has been underway uh, with staff time to prepare the phase one plans you've seen, which are mostly the median crossings. There is a phase two more crossings just like this. Uh, and the whole point of those medians is they're one of the easiest things recognized by the Federal Rail Administration to improve safety. Whole concept here is if the horns don't blow, that is the 
kind of the default safety mechanism, then we need to put something in place that's more safe. And, and so those medians allow or prevent folks from currently doing what could happen in the places where we don't have them is when the arm goes down, somebody could drive around the down arm. So that median sort of locks you in. Sure, someone could jump a median, but it is at least pre mm -hmm. prevent that as the concept. So that is recognized improvement and one of the least expensive ones we can do. Uh, for, for the quiet zone, there are some locations in downtown where it will require more expensive improvements. The intersection of Grosbeck is a key one, if you're familiar with that. There's two track crossings there. Um, we plan to put uh, traffic signals on either side and have those interlinked and coordinated with the gate arms so that we can make sure nobody gets trapped on the, on the tracks and can flush folks out of that intersection when the trains come through. So that is probably the most complicated uh, improvement still to be done. When we get permits from Union Pacific, we can go ahead and do those. We have construction plans ready to go. We're uh, just waiting on those permits to enter the right of way at that location. Uh, so those are kind of the, the three areas. We got phase one, which you've seen done out there today. We've got a phase two still to come with more of these medians. And then we have the gross spec crossing. Right. So in addition to reducing the noise pollution caused by 20 plus trains a day through our downtown, it also sounds like it's going to make it a lot safer. So thank you for the 10 plus years of work that the staff has, has done on that. Absolutely. Great. Councilman, I don't have anything else. I'm sure you, some of you may have a question. Anybody else have a question or comment on this? I have one quick question. So what is, what is the actual length of the zone? Where does it start and where does it end? So it, I guess it will give you the boundaries. I don't say which one starts or ends, but uh, if you go out 27th Street uh, that I talked about going out west, uh, it ends out past Brazos uh, Street intersection out that direction and then north uh, going down along the one that parallels uh, Main Street. That one would be, um, I guess, really the last one is 15th Street. That's part of the, the crossing because you have an overpass at Highway 21. And then when you move south, um, basically, we would be stopping just short of uh, Dodge Street. So there is crossings at Dodge and there's crossings at Carson that will be in a future quiet zone. So when we carved out the downtown quiet zone, that was the limits. And we purposefully carved out, left out just enough to be able to do another quiet zone. That would fill in the gap with the quiet zone that A&M is pursuing and others at College Station has pursued. So those all kind of line up such that if we all got our quiet zones, you would be quiet from College Station somewhere south through the limits I described on the north end through downtown. And it, it simply just restricts their ability to, to pull their, blow their train horn or is it- Blow their train horn as, as they're required right now, as a normal, as they're approaching the intersection, they will blow as approaching and they will hold on to it as they go through the intersection. But it, it, would, it would eliminate that except for when someone decides to walk across the tracks, right? So they then can still use their horn, yeah. but in a perfect world, when someone's not doing something they're not supposed to be, it would eliminate the horns. And you would still hear the train. It's more of a rumble. Uh, if, you have, if you want to see what that might look like, I invite folks to go out to Midtown Park. You can go and, and walk around the outside uh, trail that we have there close to the railroad tracks. Because there's not a at grade crossing nearby there, when the train comes by, there's no horns blowing. And so you can get a good feel of what train noise would be at, at that location. And it is much, it's much less jarring than the horn. Thank you. Anybody else? I got a question. Yes, sir. Uh, I know there can always be, be delays in this process. It's been going on for a long time. If you're just kind of projecting out, what are you thinking for, you know, the downtown Bryan part for completion? Well, I, I hate to give you a firm guess, but I will say that it's probably best summarized as a as a two to three year window, moving window. So we've got to complete the construction before we can then do the final stages, which is invite the FRA folks from uh, the feds back here and do an inspection. They measure everything we've done, make sure it's per the requirements. Union Pacific does the same thing, and then we can establish the quiet zone. That process is probably a year long process at the end of when we get the construction done. So it's that construction window that I just don't know how to answer it for you yeah. because I'm dependent on Union Pacific to give me those right of entries in the agreements. So when so you finish construction, I've been saying 2025, but here we are in 2023. Sure. And so <laughs> now I feel like it's gonna be something beyond 25, but I don't know the exact date. All right, thank you. Councilman Torres. Okay, I guess, 
the reason we brought this up for discussion today is we've had a, a lot of stuff that comes out on social media when we when we start doing these things and sometimes they don't have an understanding of the background of where we're at today and this because we're it's a very new council although a lot of us have been involved for a very long time and and i see out there uh, former commissioner scott hickel out there i know he was on this as well many years ago when we first started talking about a quiet zone and what it will do for brian not only for downtown brian for brian in general for economic development uh, we started looking at this thing back when way before me and all the improvements that were done in downtown Bryan and how do we make that established, viable economic development, retail, all the stuff that we'd like to see in our downtown. What was the biggest thing that they were talking about was the actual train whistle. While some on social media say it's very nice and quaint, when you're there, it's not, not so nice and quaint when it's happening to you. Uh, it's still going to be loud. There's still going to be trains coming through, whether we have residential developments or whether we have retail, but it'll be something that will be, I guess, livable. Uh, one of the biggest complaints we had with our hotel when, when the city actually ran and owned the hotel was that they would come in, they want to stay at this great little hotel in downtown Bryan, and they would literally be there for one night and they couldn't stand it because a train whistle blew all night long, so they'd check out and go somewhere else. So for what we're doing and with the new development, redevelopment of the LaSalle Hotel, it was part of one of the things that we promised to do and help them out with. It was try to get to a quiet zone. It's part of our 380 agreement that was brought on to us by previous councils and, and many councils before, and we're going to continue on with that good work if we get this thing all through done. Hopefully it'll be before 2025. If it's anything that I would like to see in, in our council is that we can get it done quicker. Uh, I just want to clarify all those things because we do, there's a lot of noise out there. There's a lot of stuff and not knowing what's going, really going on and behind the scenes, uh, where the money can be allocated for, where it can't be allocated. This is something that's been done for a long time. So I just want to make sure everybody is clear with that. Uh, does anybody have any other questions on that? Okay, so we'll go back to, we are still on items of five and our consent. Does anybody have any other questions on the consent agenda?